Hello, my name is Sean Bousquet. Today in this short screencast, I'll show you how to use Drupal 7's built-in Ajax framework to dynamically update web page content with new data from the server, all without a page reload. I've built a little Ajax-driven article reader to show you how the Drupal Ajax framework works. This is just a simple use case. The reader loads article thumbnails on the left side of the page, along with the article titles. Click on one of the article images or titles, and the full article will dynamically load in the larger right-hand side of the page. All this happens by pulling the new node content from the server through Ajax and changing the content area's HTML. This is accomplished without the end user having to see a reload of the full page in the browser. Now let's turn off the browser's JavaScript support for a moment. For the edge case, when the site visitor, human or search bot, visits the web page without JavaScript enabled, the system will gracefully degrade. A click on the article thumbnail or title will take the visitor to the URL of the article and load the page via a standard HTML request. For this Ajax Reader demo, I've written a small module and given it the name of Ajax Reader. Right now we are looking at the module's code. I'll deconstruct the code for you function by function. Don't worry, it's pretty basic and really comes down to just four main parts. Our first function in the module is the Ajax Reader init function. This function loads the files they need in order to be able to use Drupal's Ajax framework. It's the jQuery.form.js file as well as the system library Drupal.ajax. Normally these get loaded if there's a form that uses Ajax but not necessarily when there's no form on the page that uses Ajax. The next function is the Ajax Reader menu function. It's an implementation of Drupal's hook menu. In the menu, I assign it to the page callback function Ajax link response. I give it normal user access and make it the type of a menu callback. The next function is where most of the magic happens. It's the Ajax link response function, which is the callback function we assigned in the hook menu. Note this function receives two arguments, both with their defaults already set. Type equals Ajax and node ID equals zero. In Drupal, page callback functions automatically receive any arguments passed to the hook menu. This first line uses a helper function to assign content to the output variable which will return in the link response. If the type is Ajax, which is the default, then we're going to use Drupal's Ajax command system. In this line, I tell Ajax to replace content inside the wrapper with the ID of content with the output from the node plus wrapping it inside a div with the ID of content so it will have the same ID as before and can be replaced again. I put the commands in an array and tell it that it's the type of Ajax, and then I use the function Ajax deliver to format the page. If the return type is not Ajax, then we'll return the output as normal, wrapping it again inside the div ID of content. This next function is my helper function, which basically takes the node ID as an argument, as you saw it being passed up here loads the node, prepares it with the node view, and then returns the theme node. And that's really all that's part of the module. For the last part of this system, we need to format the links to the menu callbacks menu item, which we map to the page callback function. To use the Ajax framework, the structure of the links to the menu callback should follow this format. The menu callback menu item, forward slash node.js forward slash any arguments you want to pass to the menu callback and it should have a class of use Ajax and then your link title. So let's take a look at a sample link pulled from the demo page I was just clicking on. First you have the main part of your URL then we have our pointer to the menu item Ajax-reader which is defined in the hook menu 
Then we have the string Node.js. Now this string Node.js is used in combination with the use-ajax class. This tells Drupal that if JavaScript is turned on to go ahead and replace all links with the string Ajax. If JavaScript is not turned on, then it cannot replace the string and therefore it will pass the Node.js argument rather than the Ajax argument, which back in our function here, that's what gets passed. In this case, it's changed because Ajax was on and it then returned Ajax formatted content. Notice when we turned off the JavaScript, it didn't pass the argument of type Ajax, it actually passed the no JS string, and therefore the output was returned normally. Finally, the node ID is passed, and again, the arguments are automatically passed on to the page callback. So I receive the node ID here, pass it on to my content loader, helper function, load the content, theme it, return it back, tell the command to replace it, deliver it in an Ajax format, and we're done. Now reformatting the links to use Ajax for an Ajax driven system can be done in a number of ways. Be done through a TPL file. In this case, I'm doing it actually through the view which generates the article teasers block on the left hand side of the reader page. Here's the screen showing part of the view, it's a block. I'm pulling in content that's published and of type article. I'm pulling in the node ID before everything else, which I'll show you in a moment. And basically, I'm hiding that from the display. I'm pulling in the content image. And then finally, I'm pulling in the content title. So in the view, I'm rewriting the title field as a link. And I'm telling it to put in the link, the link part ajax-reader, the string node.js, and use the node ID for the field that I've pulled previously and hit. Tell it to use the absolute path. And I get to add the link class right here in the view of use Ajax. And that's really all there is to it. I also trim it because I want to make it look nice and fit under the images at 18 characters and add an ellipsis. Now let's make a quick change to my helper function, which loads content. We're going to change it to dynamically load a view into the reader's content rather than a full node. The view that we're loading is just one that I've created, which receives a node ID and its argument, and then displays field data from the node. So I'm going to use return views embedded view, the name of my view, the display, and pass it the argument of the node ID. Let's save this. We'll do a refresh. And now when I click on an article image or title, it loads the little view that I've created, which has really just got a couple of fields in it. So as you can see, you can load views, whole node content, blocks, a number of other parts of Drupal, all into a web page dynamically without having the end user having to refresh. For more details on the views and the other components of the reader, you can visit seanbousquet.com forward slash ajax dash reader dash demo. Or you can get all the code on GitHub at github.com forward slash seanbousquet forward slash Drupal dash ajax dash demo. You'll find extra reference material and resources at both URLs. Just remember, there are really only four basic steps to set up and use Drupal 7's AJAX framework for non-form-based content updates. Step one, write a menu callback. Step two, return AJAX formatted content in a page callback function. Step three, format the links to add the Node.js and the user AJAX elements to the links that point to the menu callback. And finally, make sure that the jQuery.form.js file and the Drupal.ajax libraries are loaded into the page. That's the end of the screencast. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching.